everybody. <laughs> Going live to talk about how the heck do you read your gene keys? <laughs> how do you start this process? How do you start this journey? Um, I know a lot of you purchased the book and you wanted to dive right in and then you received it and you're like, this thing is massive and I don't know what to do with it. Um, so I thought I would give those of you who um, need more direction and more action steps, I would give you guys some action steps. So if you notice in, if you notice in the description, I put a list of, um, is it 18? 18 steps and then an alternate use for the gene keys. So I'm just going to go over the different ways that you can use this book and the ways that I've used it to read your profile. So first of all, there we go. Okay, first of all, you're going to want to go to the Gene Keys website and you're going to want to get your profile and probably print it out. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. If I can get one that's not as crazy looking as mine. Probably my, nope, that one's crazy too. I write all over them, guys. I just, I need to. <laughs> so this is what the profile would look like when you print it out and you're going to want to use it because you're going to want to reference it so that you know what to look up in the book if you're going to do it this way. So first of all, I, I would highly suggest that you start with your activation sequence. Oh, I missed a step. Download the support packet <laughs> that I created for you because it goes over all the different um, sequences, what they mean, the different spheres, what the sphere represents. Like it'll have life's work and then it'll tell you, okay, what's the description of the life's work and what does that mean for you? So after you get the packet, you're going to want to print out the hologenic profile and print out the packet. So then you have it handy. If you are like a tangible type person where you want to hold something, um, after you print that out, then I would highly suggest you start with the activation sequence. Those are the four spheres that are in green, and you'll see them on your chart. What's up? I'm getting some, some thumbs up um, comments so I know who's on. I only see that there's two up in the corner, but I don't know who you guys are. <laughs> um, so the green ones are the ones that are associated with your activation sequence, and those are your four prime gifts. Those are the gifts that um, make up, I believe, 70% of you, 70% of your personality. They are the four prime gifts. Hey, Gabriella. Hey, Jennifer. <laughs> What's up, ladies? So those are your four prime gifts that are the four that are in the activation sequence. If you notice, as you started to dive into your gene keys, um, it's hard to point because I don't know what I'm looking at. The life's work and the evolution are programming partners. So in your hologenic profile, um, the other ones inside, they don't usually come with their programming partners, but with the activation sequence, they come with their programming partners. So Life's Works programming partner um, is the same as the evolution, and then the Radiance programming partner is the same as the purpose. And you'll see that they each have the same um, line numbers too. So this one's two for, um, who is this, Luke? And then this one, um, Oops, is six. So he's got two sixes and two twos. And I'll just put it up closer so you guys can see. There you go. On his, I actually wrote down the victim pattern so that I had them handy. And then I also wrote the name of the chapter title on his. Mine gets a little bit crazier. Um, I put checks on them because I was making notes. So every time I went over one, I would do a check by it, so then I would know what I what I looked into for my kids. And after you print that out, you take note of your activation sequence. Um, you are going to read the description of the activation sequence, um, so that's in the support packet, and you can read that. And then after you do that, you're going to start with your life's work. And I want you to go in the order that it has on here, and you'll see that there are these lines right here. Um, let me see if I can. These lines, if you get really close, you're going to see where the arrow, where am I going here? Where am I going here? Over here. 
you'll see where the arrow comes down. So it starts at life's work and then the arrow points down to evolution. And you'll see that, you'll see that there. So you're gonna go follow the lines. Um, because the purpose of doing this is when you're working with your hologenic profile, you start with your life's work. So that's the area in which you thrive, where you feel most comfortable. Um, and then you come down to your evolution. So that's your single hardest um, shadow to overcome. It's something that shows up in your life repeatedly. Um, the radiance is something that undermines your health. And then um, you've got your purpose and you have these, th you, these four that you're working with. And once you've kind of understood and are develop developing that and how to transcend those shadows, then, you, then, then that's how you know, this is who I am. These are my four prime gifts. These are my, the four things I'm working on. These show up in my personality the most. These are my gifts because those gifts turn into um, a way for you to be able to give back to, can you please talk about channels? Um, in human design or the lines. I'm talking about gene keys right here, but I'll, I'll do another video for human design, Gabriella, because um, the channels are different. The channels are different. Um, they're, um, they're two gates coming together. And if you have a complete channel, if it's defined, that's a strength of yours or a weakness, depending on what color it is and how it shows up in your life. Um, okay, so after you do the activation sequence, you move on to the Venus sequence. And this is all about opening your heart through relationships. So you're actually moving your way back to the time of conception. The core is, is when you were in your mom's belly and you were imprinted with this, with this gene key and the shadow frequency and this gift frequency. This happened in the womb. This happened, um, the SQ happened um, year one to seven or birth to seven, sorry. And then the EQ, so your emotions, how your emotional competence, how you deal with your emotions. You learn that from your parents and that happens at age seven to 14. And you'll see where this showed up in your life. And um, if you don't, in the book, it, with, um, I don't remember which gene key it is, but um, a lot of adults don't have emotional intelligence because they haven't ever gotten out of the shadow frequency. So that's why a lot, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to make this a stereotype, but a lot of men are not emotionally intelligent because they were taught to suppress their emotions. And so here it's going to be a challenge for them. This is what they're going to have to um, move out of. Um, the S, the EQ, uh, IQ is um, mental. It's all, it's all how you use your mind, how, how um, you view your mind. And it's an, it's an intelligence quotient. And that one, oh, magical genius. My son has one of the similar gene keys to me. I just noticed it. Um, anyways, that one is age 14 to 21. And then you'll see attraction. These are the people, the experiences, or not experiences, the people you bring into your life um, and how you struggle with relationships there. And then you come down to your purpose because your purpose is, is part of your um, You'll see that some of them are, are, are striped. They're like half and half. So this is half, half of your um, activation sequence and half of your Venus sequence because that's where it starts coming up. That's where um, it, it transforms from the activation to the Venus sequence. And you're learning about opening your heart through relationships. And once you come back down to your core, you are back to where you originally started in the womb before all that other crap messed us up. <laughs> Before we got imprinted with our parents' crap, before we got we got messed up by our environment, before we learned how to operate in our shadows and not our gifts, we come back to our core, what we were born with, or not born, what we were conceived with, our mission, our purpose. This is who we are. This is our vocation. This is what we're meant to do. Um, and then you have your whole pearl sequence, and that talks about how um, how you are meant to operate in the world. Um, in, in terms of giving back because you use your four prime gifts, the four things that you have in the activation sequence, you use those four gifts to support your purpose in this world. So you're using your gifts, you're using your personality, you're using um, the gifts of that sequence um, to support what you're meant to do in this world. And if you're operating at the shadow frequency, then you are not operating at your full potential. Potentially, you're not living your most authentic and best self life. So um, one thing I want to note is that this little pearl right here is kind of um, 
a big deal because once you understand your pearl, you start pop popping up into the gift frequencies of all of these because you understand your pearl. Your pearl is the key that unlocks all these other gifts. So to understand your pearl is to, uh, is to unlock the gifts, the gift potential of all of these areas. So culture is um, the people that you bring into your life to help that come into your life, not that you bring, the people that come into your, to your life to help support you on your mission, that help teach you things, that help give you little tidbits. It's also a, um, a weakness. Can um, The shadow frequency here can contribute to why you are not attaining prosperity in this life. It's either alignment, like you're doing the wrong, you're not actually fulfilling your purpose, or you come over to your culture, that's just that you are living in the shadow. My son's is indifference. And so if you're living in indifference, then you are not going to have prosperity. So my son can't do anything that he has indifference to. He, he not indifference, but that feeling of indifference, he needs to know, okay, instead of feeling indifferent, like, I don't care. I don't care what happens. I don't care. I don't care. Indifference is a really horrible emotion to have. And I've been there before. You need to get, you have to have versatility, versatility with knowing. And this one is called magic. And he has two magical geniuses. Um, instead of being indifferent with something, it's about being versatile with all the gifts, all the things that you have, putting them together and making it exciting because you may have to do something that you don't like and can't be indifferent about it. You need to figure out how to make it exciting how to get creative with it how to bring in all your different skills and bring them together and also knowing um that you can master things that when you put your mind to something and you use all the skills you have you can master another thing and so that's kind of what his is so when he is indifferent and he's not um using all his other strengths and trying to master something he um he can't he can't attain prosperity so he definitely in his path he is he his path is meant, he's meant to master something. He's meant to be um, a master at something, be very skilled at something and probably has to do, I mean, this one's about family alchemy. Um, I know that somebody had once said that he has a um, pastoral anointment on his life. I'm not sure if he's going to be a pastor or if he's just gonna be um, like a speaker of some kind or maybe even a counselor, I'm not sure. Um, but this has to do with family alchemy. So it's dissolving this whole hierarchy, like the man is the breadwinner, blah, 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 all this stuff. And it's about switching it up and also teaching. I don't know. He's really sensitive. So he's probably going to teach, um, he's going to teach men how to use their emotions. So he could even be like a relationship coach. I don't know. Um, he does have cosmic communion and this one's, um, about working together. So his pearl is about working together. So he probably won't just be working with men. It'll be um, synergy between a group, between men and women, maybe even a family counselor. I'm not sure. That's what I got when I first read his profile. And then um, anyways, you can cut, start putting the pieces together. You can do it for your kids. You can do it for your husband. <laughs> you can do it for anybody. And you just kind of look at the patterns. You can look at the, the stuff individually, all the spheres individually. But once you start putting the pieces together and looking at this as a whole, like don't get too focused on the, on the individual spheres. You can do that in the beginning, but I want you to remember to pull back and look at it as a whole because without these other pieces, it means something totally different, right? You can just get so caught up in focusing on one sphere and you're like, well, this means this, but then it doesn't make any sense when you put it together with the rest of the stuff, you see? Um, and let's see, what else do I have on my list? Um, oh yeah. Okay. So that was a long time. We talked about that. So after that, you're going to, okay. So you read the description for your life's work. And then I want you to notice in your life's work, I want you to notice, um, what is, is it going to, okay. Well, this says, I want you to notice your, um, your, your shadows, your gifts and your, um, cities. So you're going to look at the, this one's the shadow of complexity the gift of simplicity and um, quintessence is the city. So I want you to look at that and I want you to, to think about what those words mean to you in your life right now and then see what that shadow means for you, see what that gift means for you. And then after that, I want you to um, take note of the gene key number, which this one is 23. And then I want you to look up the victim, the victim pattern. And you'll see that I listed 
um, a link to the victim patterns. And so his is 23. So his is a victim of complexity. So making things complicated and um, yeah, making things complicated. Yeah, I feel like he's definitely, it's definitely going to be God oriented. <laughs> I'm already feeling that right now. Um, so who knows if he'll be a pastor. I'm not going to put that pressure on him. And again, if you're doing this for your kids and, and you feel like, oh, I found out what they're going to do and you want to like foster that, don't force them into anything. Like if you already figure out what their future is before they do, it's like, don't force them into anything. Don't, don't put those thoughts in their head. Let them come to it on their own. This is just for you, for your knowledge. You don't have to share it with them. It's for your knowledge so you know how can you support them when they show the signs of of, of dealing with these struggles, these victim patterns, when they, when they, when they, when that shows up in their life, how can you support them? Cause you're not, you're not meant to change them. You're not meant to, um, you're not meant to kind of force them into that. Um, oh, I'm going to invite some people. That's cool. Um, anyways, I just invited some of my friends to watch this. <laughs> this is cool. I never saw that invite button before. I got distracted. Squirrel. <laughs> If you guys feel like inviting anybody to watch this, you can. It's definitely beneficial if you are working with the gene keys. So, anyways, back on track. Contemplate how these show up in your life. Um, take note. Okay, so we're looking at the victim pattern, so victim of complexity. How does that show up in your life? Where do you make things complicated? Where they don't need to be complicated? Where they should be simple? Um, where are you trying to elaborate on a story, and then all of a sudden you have all these details, and it's like, you know, um, let's see. After that, after you look up the victim pattern, then, because I want you guys to have a chance to look it up on your own without reading the chapter. Look up the victim pattern, look at the shadow, the gift, and the city, and figure that out for yourself first. Like, understand it from, from your understanding first, and then jump into the gene keys, and then see how that might shift your perspective on things, how that might bring in another instance where you didn't think of before. And um, it just makes your, it just makes it deeper for you. Uh, let's see, because it starts at where you're at and then goes to um, where you have learned, what you have learned by reading it. So we're going to go, so he is 23. So 23, you're going to go look up 23, and that's his life's work. So 23 in the book looks like this. So when you open your book, you're going to see, um, that's the title over here. You'll see the shadow, the gift, and the city. And I want you to take note of these things as well. You're going to see the programming partner. So his programming partner is the 43rd. That always shows up as his evolution if we're talking about um, life's work. I, don't, I feel it's going to be too blurry for you guys. But anyways, 40, the 43rd gene key is the programming partner. You're going to want to read both of those. Um, obviously, when you go to evolution, you're going to get there. But when you're in the Venus sequence, they don't usually show up together. So sometimes you're going to want to look up the programming partner of a certain gene key. So say we're at the attraction and you have 42 is the attraction. You're going to go look up 42 and be like, okay, what's the programming partner of 42 so that I know. So 42 is letting go of living and dying. So that's about expectation, detachment, and celebration. And the programming partner is the 32nd gene key. Um, and so you'll look up that one because they'll both be be kind of, um, when you're in the shadow, the shadows work together. The shadows work, hey Anita, the shadows work together so that um, they enable each other to stay in the shadow. They always, misery always loves company, so look up your programming partner and see, okay, how are you showing up in my life, and I'm going to kick you out of my life. Um, but anyways, it's not about kicking them out, because you move through the shadows to get to your gifts, so it's not about extinguishing them, it's about moving through them, because there's always fear that lies in the shadows and confront the fear, get to the gift. Um, okay, so you're gonna read the shadow. So we're on the 23rd gene key um, because that's my son's life work. So 23rd up here again, and uh, we're in the shadow. So the shadow is of complexity. You're gonna wanna read this and then you're gonna get to the repressive and the reactive nature. So you're gonna wanna see, okay, how is this gene key of complexity showing up in my, in my life? Um, you're either, the repressive nature is dumb and the reactive nature is fragmented. So you'll read this and be like, okay, how is this showing up? So I'll be like, okay, how does this show up in my son's life? Depending on how acute the level of fear is in the individual or group, will probably never express what they really think. Um, language will be held back either through internal repression or external oppression. It is interesting that in the modern meaning of the word dumb, 
has come to refer of lack of intelligence because that is often how such people are perceived. If you are choked by fear, you cannot speak clearly, if at all. This is totally my son. My son lives in the repressive nature of dumb, which is just um, him not being able to speak. He just holds in what he wants to say. We, we always struggle with how he communicates with us when he is in a difficult situation or he's feeling uncomfortable. He usually goes to that repressive nature a lot, which is interesting and amazing because now I'm starting to see this, like this was just an aha for me. <laughs> um, so com that was the shadow of complexity. So making things super complex when they don't have to be. And because of the complexity of how he's feeling, he feels everything. Um, I'm pointing because he's over there. He feels everything. And it's very intense for him because he's feeling the emotions. He's kind of straddling this world and the spiritual world, and he doesn't know how to understand what's coming at him. So instead of dealing with it, he, um, he like chokes back. And you can tell, like, he stops breathing too. Like, I'll see him like holding his breath. I'm like, you need to let it out, let it out. It's okay. Um, so that's interesting. So I won't read the fragmented, the fragment, um, sorry, the reactive nature is fragmented. He is the repressive nature. Just because um, you're one, you can be the other. You can be both at some times. Um, you'll see how that shows up in your, in your life. Or you could be dominantly one. And you just know that that's how you show up. Anyways, so after you go through and you read the shadow and discern if you're repressive or reactive, um, you're going to look, how does this victim, how does this victim pattern show up in, in his life? How does the shadow show up in his life? So I just explained how it showed up in his life and you're going to do the same for yourself. And then we have, um, how does this relate to the sphere you are reading about? So if we're reading about life's work, this is where he feels most at ease. This is where he feels most comfortable. So <laughs> simplicity when he has simplicity. So the noblest truth, and, and I'll read, I haven't read this yet, but I'll read the noblest truth and see, okay, the environment, um, or the arena that he thrives best in is in, in the, obviously when he is choked with choked, choked up and not talking and, and in the repressive, um, and in the repressive shadow state, um, that's not comfortable for him. You can even tell in his, in his um, facial expressions, it's not comfortable for him. He doesn't like operating in the shadow, which makes sense. So what is his, what is the, the most conducive environment for him to thrive in is simplicity, making things simple. Um, this is going to be awesome for parenting for me after, I mean, after I get off here, I'm going to read this. <laughs> it's going to be awesome for me. Um, I'll share this with my husband. Um, so you're talking about uh, how this shows up in his life, the victim pattern. Next, 14, step 14. How does this relate to the sphere we were reading about? We already went over that. <laughs> um, 15, take note of the shadow and victim pattern and bring it into your conscious mind and alert to alert you um, when it may be coming up. So since I understand, okay, his, his repressive nature is this. And I already noticed that. I already noticed that. But for yourself, it might be a little bit harder. Um, you can ask your guides. To, to put up some signal for you. Like you can make, um, I don't know, a stop sign or something like, hold on, notice what you're doing. Or you can make it be like, um, depending on what gene key, you can make it be a certain thing. So if you're working on um, gene key, okay, so, okay, for the 23rd gene key, his shadow is complexity. Okay, so what's complex to me? Um, math, crazy long formulas, complex formulas. So when he's in his shadow, I want my guides to alert me by showing me because I'm clairvoyant. So I see things. Um, I want them to say, I want them. Okay. So I guess I said, say, I want them to say complexity, shadow of complexity. And I want them to show me like a math formula. And then that's my alert system that says, oh crap, in the shadow, in the victim. You can do that for your own keys too. That's why I say, don't read these all at once. You're going to work on them. You're going to dive into them. You're going to see how they play out in your life. Because when you read these, these are an activation sequence somewhat in, the, in and of themselves. It will, you'll start, it'll, since it brings to, to your conscious mind, you're going to see what happens in your daily life. And it's going to like, you know, pop up. And I'm like, oh, I'm doing that. Oh, I'm doing that. Because it's something, it's a pattern. You want to break the pattern. Um, a lot of you know that I am developing um, a new thing that I'm going to be offering, and I have done it to a couple of people. Anita's experienced this key. I have not worked on her gene keys, though. Anita's experienced this key. Um, Van has experienced this, and Laura has, expl has, has ex is experiencing it right now. So what I have been doing is um, I have the ability energetically 
to give you a, the keys to these different gene keys. And what it does is it, is it unlocks the potential in the gene key. We release the shadow and activate the gift. And, and then this kind of explosion happens in your reality where it brings forth experiences, people, situations for you to experience the gift frequency and, experience, and understand how you had been operating in the shadow frequency. So it's, it's really powerful, really tremendous. Um, I'm not currently, I'm, I haven't currently launched it yet. Um, I'm just um, using it with, with some of my clients and their experiences. Oh yeah, and Ashley Hay has experienced this as well. Um, I'm going to be launching this soon and I'm act I actually have been working with Alicia. Alicia has helped me develop this. Um, I just took her master class that she just offered um, this weekend. I'm working a lot. I am working a lot towards developing and refining this so that it is an amazing experience for you guys. And it's been freaking awesome so far. So this kind of is what I'm going to start moving into is while you're treading um, the golden path, which is the gene keys, I'm going to support you by allowing, by working with you during these, like we're going to, we're going to go through together. We're going to say we're working on your life's work. I'm going to unlock that for you. And energetically, it's going to bring stuff to you so you can work through that. It's going to be more in your face than if you just read this. You read it and you're like, okay, yeah, this is what's going on, okay. And then it's kind of a slow process. This is more like, here you go, let's, let's give it to you fast. <laughs> let's do this now. So you wanna get into your gift frequencies? We're gonna do this. So um, that's gonna be rolling out soon. I am, I am also gonna talk about Business by Design. I am offering in the Business by Design program, I'm gonna unlock all four of your, um, pearl sequences that has to do with your business i'm going to lock all four of those pearl sequences and we're going to see what happens to your business it's gonna explode in such a good way <laughs> so anyways um how okay let me get back on track I, i'm so squirrely i'm sorry <laughs> i'm so sorry these people are like i want steps one two three four then i'm like oh here oh this way oh let's go this way you guys know me i'm just this is just how i am <laughs> um okay so take note, okay, you asked your guide, so we talked about 15, 16, we're on to 16. Read the gift and the city of this frequency. So you're obviously, you're going to read the gift and you're gonna read the city. You're gonna see how this plays out in your life. Um, if you've ever been attained the gift frequency, have you ever seen yourself operating in the gift frequency? Can you remember a time when you were operating in the gift frequency of simplicity instead of complexity as per my son? Um, Yes, Gabriella, we'll, we will dive into that with you too. Um, okay, so, uh, yep, and then 17, look up the programming partner. So I want you to look up the programming partner and read that and see how is the programming partner um, affecting, how is the programming partner affecting that gene key? So if you're not in your life's work, like I said before, your attraction is 42, you're gonna go check out 32 because I think that's what the programming partner is for that guy. And the programming partner always has the same line number. So if you are looking at attraction and it's 42.3, the programming partner will be 32.3 because it's the same. The line number is the same. They work complementary to each other. And so after that, you compare this key in relation to your other keys. You're going to look at your life's work and compare it to all the other ones and see how does this play out in my life? How is this supported by this one? How does my evolution undermine my life's work? How vice versa, all that stuff. You're gonna look at what's directly affected. So where, where are the arrows coming from? Cause you're gonna see which, which arrows are coming to and from this key. And then you're gonna see, okay, how does this affect this? How does this show up in my life here? How does this show up in my life in relationships? How does this show up in my life in business? And just see and compare and see like as a whole in the bigger picture in the grand scheme of things, where is this showing up? And what is it doing to you? <laughs> and after that, you can repeat steps three through 18 and do it for all the other ones. If you don't want this approach where it's um, steps like this and it's so regimented, if you want it to just be free flowing, you can use your book as an Oracle deck. And each day you can decide, okay, what am I gonna, what is my focus for today? Uh, mine opens to um, the 27th which is selfishness, altruism, and selflessness. 
Um, so this is showing up in my life today, apparently. It's called Food of the Gods. So I'm going to read this one and see what this has to say to me. Am I operating in the shadow frequency? Am I operating in the gift frequency? I'm operating in the gift frequency of altruism. So I'm going to see, okay, how am I right now probably operating in the gift of altruism? Um, the re reactive nature is self-centered. So where, where am I acting self-centered sometimes? Or repressive nature is self-sacrificing. I feel like I do that a lot. Um, <laughs> well, how does that show up in your life? I am self-centered too sometimes. You know, sometimes you just got to, I mean, maybe it's not the shadow frequency because sometimes we just have to take care of ourselves. And we need to be selfish in a way, but in a good way. <laughs> and then um, the city is love of the gods. So you can use this as an oracle, an oracle deck. Just freaking open it and be like, oh, what am I, what am I doing today? All right. Uh, teamwork. Ooh, yeah. Teamwork. The 44th gift of teamwork or distrustful and misjudging. So these people whose genius is to read other people. Um, so yeah, you can just use it as an oracle deck, see what happens, see what you come up with, see what's showing up in your life. Well, what is my husband struggling with today? Okay, the 26, the sacred tricksters. So what is he struggling with? Uh, pride. Oh, <laughs> that's so silly. <laughs> it's so funny using these as oracle. It's like so on point. <laughs> like okay okay but I didn't I, I actually flipped to the city so I wonder if he's operating in the city um, anyway so use it as an Oracle deck what you can also do is um, do a line number deep dive so um, again if you they don't talk about the line numbers in the in the book it's in another book and I have that book so if you guys if you guys wanted to do uh, like a if you're working on a gene can you want to do a deep dive and you want me to help you understand the line number I, I offer readings so we can go over the key and the line number and it's $50 and so if you are taking like this week or this month to to hop into your life's work you can um, I can support you in that by helping you understand your line number how is this gene key showing up in your life um, and and how can you take action steps to get out of the shadow and into the gift frequency um, and we'll talk about the sphere. So if it's the life's work, the line, so is it um, a line two, a line three, what does that mean? <laughs> and, and then we'll, we'll get action steps for how you can work for it, work through it. Um, what else? Let's see. Oh, we also have group study. So group study, um, we're going to start launching Unlock Your Design, especially with this new program that I'm launching. Everybody that signs up for the support for the business by design, um, program, you're going to get a six month access to the unlock your, let's see, that's it. Unlock your design group program. That's $25 a month. So it's $150, a $50 value that you get when you sign up for the program. And we'll talk about that later. But, um, if you want to be part of the program, it's $25 a month. I know a lot of you, um, had signed up for the support where you get three questions a month and, um, I will support you on your human design and gene key journey. Um, those of you that want to, you can sign up for the group study instead, um, and have more support. And I'm still trying to figure out what would be, um, best and most beneficial for each of you for how that program will work. If we're going to go through each of the keys, um, you could probably get a discount on me unlocking the keys. I'll develop it more and then I'll let you guys know. Um, but I'd love to hear what you want out of that paid group. Um, because I definitely want to support you in that capacity. And I want to give those of you that are really, this is for the people, that group is for the people who want to be serious about the Gene Keys journey and not just like a hobby, like, oh, I'll figure it out. If you're serious about it, then I want to support you and I know I want to walk this walk with you. So if you want to sign up for the Unlock Your Design group, we'll be doing deep dives and we'll be working through this together and sharing our experiences with each other. Um, anyways, uh, business by design mini session. I also offer that you guys can read through that in the comments above. Um, and, uh, I also listed where you can book with me. So sign up on my calendar. So that's about it. I definitely, um, thanks Van for suggesting that I do this post because I know a lot of you need, um, steps one, two, three, four, because it's a little bit confusing. And I always forget that this is just something I get intuitively and like 
just at a deep level. I look at it and I just understand it. And I know that not a lot of you can do that. And so I want to recognize that and, and give you the support you need and be a, teach, a good teacher. Because I didn't spend a bunch of money doing my elementary education credential for nothing. Oh, wait, I did. <laughs> but um, yeah, I definitely want to be a good teacher, a better teacher. So if, if you have ways for me to improve or um, you want to learn something, I'm definitely ready to create videos and support you on this journey. So thanks for watching. Those of you, I know Gabrielle, you stayed on the whole thing. I love you so much. You're awesome. Um, those of you who stayed on, thank you so much. And let me know in the comments if you need anything from me. And um, I really hope that this made it easier and more accessible for you to start working on your Gene Keys journey. Yay! I love you guys and I, I have to go. I have an appointment soon. So have a good rest of your day. Bye, guys.